Okay, thanks everybody for attending this workshop um, on moving to the ultra course view. Uh, and this is uh, today we're going to focus specifically on organizations. Uh, it's very similar to courses. Um, so much of the content would be the same. But again, today's focus will be um, mostly for organizations. Um, if you'll forgive me for not turning on my camera, uh, it's only picking up my laptop camera, which is the way my desk is laid out, pointing at a wall kind of in the back of the room. Uh, it won't be very helpful, but um, is everybody able to hear, hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, you're here because you're probably in charge of an organization. Um, and as of May 31st, um, if that organization is in um, original, it will need to be transitioned to um, ultra course view. Um, so just really quickly, my name is Kevin Harris. I'm the instructional support coordinator at CIDL. Um, you can always reach out to us here. Uh, my direct email is kevin.harris at niu.edu. Um, and we can help with anything related to Blackboard. Uh, the, the branch that I'm a part of works specifically with educational technology and the integration of educational technology. And so, uh, and how that can support your teaching practices or how, how that can support your role here in the university. So um, feel free to reach out to us. Again, kevin.harris at niu.edu or you can email CIDL at niu.edu um, and that will be handled by someone here in the office. Um, the agenda for the day, I don't think we'll take the full hour. So if you have questions uh, or kind of like um, specific uh, issues or uh, requests, we can help with those as well. Um, we'll just do an overview of, of Ultra, uh, give a timeline. We'll talk about if Blackboard is actually the, the best tool for you to be using, depending on your situation. I'll show you how to request an organization. We'll talk about enrollments. Um, we'll look at how to build uh, in Ultra. It's it's different than original. It's not so different. I don't think that it that it will be too difficult to figure out, but it is it's a little quirky uh, if you're just getting into it. We'll talk about course migration or course copy. Um, we'll use the student preview feature to to look at everything in our course um, or our organization. Um, we'll talk about how to disable your old organization once your new one is created, and then we'll deal with any questions that come up. Um, so Ultra, is, someone at Blackboard told me that the best way to think about Ultra is considering it, consider it as a, as a new learning management system and not just an upgrade to the original course view. Um, some of the features and the way that they're used, they, they perform uh, kind of the same functions, but the way that you access them or add them is a little bit different. So um, essentially the idea is that it's gonna be more mobile friendly. It's gonna create uh, consistent use uh, across or con consistent experience for students across all of their courses. Um, in theory, it simplifies, it will simplify workflows and, and uh, it, it increases accessibility. Um, and the main thing and the most important thing is that Blackboard is supporting it heavily. So they're, every month they release, at the beginning of the month, um, a bunch of new updates and improvements, um, which they're not doing with the original course view. So they're kind of heavily investing in ultra course view, uh, I believe with the intention of at, at some point in the near future phasing out original course view. So uh, we're just staying ahead of that. As of um, this semester, all courses that are being taught uh, with a Blackboard page, um, that Blackboard page is already um, in ultra course view now. Uh, and like I said, um, May 31st is the deadline for organizations. Um, on our website, we have a, uh, a kind of a large collection of, of tools and resources to help um, support users with Blackboard. Uh, one of those is this feature on what's new in Ultra. So if Ultra doesn't have the ability to do what you want at the moment, um, it's likely that it's being planned. Uh, and so every month we post a video um, and we update this page here um, with the new features that are being added um, as they come up. They also have a um, an idea exchange where most of these improvements come from. Uh, and if you have an idea, if there's something missing in Ultra that, that you wish existed, you can let us know, uh, or you can actually go to the idea exchange yourself uh, and we can uh, put the idea in and then users vote uh, on those ideas and then Blackboard prioritizes its improvements uh, largely based on those ideas. Uh, there are other resources on the on the webpage. Um, 
nru.edu slash blackboard slash ultra, um, which includes essentially a, a tool or a guide on how to use just about every feature um, that's available in Blackboard. Um, as I said before, all courses uh, that are taught are now taught are, are now taught in Ultra, um, and uh, all organizations that are in Original will be made unavailable as of May 31st. You will still, if you're the um, the the owner of that of that organization, you will still have access to the content um, for your records. Uh, you can copy stuff over um, that's in those uh, courses that are unavailable, but they won't be able to be accessed by users. So the members of the organization won't be able to actually go in and access anything. Um, all right. So the first question I think is, is, um, is Blackboard actually the best tool for what you need? And there are a couple of things to consider. Um, in the past, some, some organizations use Blackboard just for the ability to have uh, web conferencing tools like uh, Collaborate. Uh, but now the university has access to Teams and Zoom. Uh, and so if, if the only thing that you're using Ultra for or Blackboard for is that um, uh, web conferencing tool, uh, there are other options that may be uh, better suited for you. Uh, and kind of the same if it's just a uh, like a small group uh, and it's just a kind of repository for documents, you have access to OneDrive and SharePoint, um, which you can also connect to Teams. Um, which could be potentially a better option than using um, a Blackboard organization. On the other hand, if you are using the gradebook, um, <clears throat> so if there's any sort of assignments or, or uh, tasks that, that users need to do, uh, then Blackboard probably is a, a, the best choice that we have. Um, and then also kind of based on the number of users. So some organizations you know, include the entire faculty and staff, some include uh, members of, of a major and so on. Um, just based on that number of users, Blackboard is probably certainly the better option as well. Um, but it really depends on your kind of use case. Uh, and if you have questions on that or you want to explore some of these other options, uh, let me know and we can talk about those. Um, so the first thing is requesting a new organization. Um, and this is done through the Department of IT. And I'm going to share in the chat um, actually the page that I'm using to kind of guide most of this presentation. Uh, and th anything that we cover today is actually covered pretty well in this uh, on this link here that I just shared in the chat. But essentially, you go to it.niu.edu, and then uh, through request services, you can add or remove a Blackboard org. And I will show you how to do that. So here I'm on, um, I went to that link uh, and then you land on the service portal page. Uh, and what you do is up here in this toolbar at the top, you click request service and then add or remove Blackboard org. So it's in that very first uh, upper left box there. Uh, from here, you would click add new Blackboard organization. And then um, you'll put in your contact number, um, the organization name if it's attached um, to a department and then just write out the purpose of the organization uh, it's, if it's continuous uh, organization you would click that and then uh, you click submit do it usually gets back to you within the day um, it's not instant so if you request a course in blackboard you can request a shell and that happens instantly um, but to request your organization uh, they have to manually add those and uh, I, like I said, I think it, it, they're, used, they're typically done within the day, and if not, the next day, um, you'll get an email telling you that your organization is ready to go. So that's how you would go about creating your new organization. Uh, it will automatically create it in Ultra for you. In the past, there was a time when you had the ability to choose uh, Ultra or Original, um, and like I said, now everything is going to be uh, put out in Ultra. So you'll do that, you'll get an email, and then you can open your organization. Questions on that that process? I guess that's probably the most important step. All right. Um, and then the next issue uh, is how do you actually get people into your course? And that's going to really depend on uh, the number of people that are in the course. Um, if you just have a few, uh, it's easiest just to add them yourself. Uh, and so I'll show you how to do that. 
So when you're in Blackboard, you'll access your organizations um, under the organizations tab. Uh, one way to know, some if you're not sure if your organization is already in Ultra, if it's in gray like this, it's in original. If it's got a little gray tab next to it, uh, if the tab uh, is um, has any color at all other than gray, uh, it's already in Ultra. Um, so like the, this one here is an Ultra and this one is an Ultra. So once you're here, uh, and you're in the main page. This is what uh, the Ultra course view looks like. Your landing page is the content page. Uh, and you kind of you have a variety of options up here uh, in this toolbar um, that you can move through. But the roster is right here on this um, content page. And if you click on view everyone in your roster or in your organization, um, all the members will appear here. Uh, and then if you want to add, you can go up here to the upper right hand corner and there's a plus sign. And then you can enter the name um, or ID. And then the person will appear here. And then you can click the little plus sign to the side. You can select their role. Um, I'm just going to put them as a participant and then save. And now it's been added that way. And like I said, if it's only a few people, this is going to definitely be the fastest option uh, and probably the quickest for you. If, on the other hand, you have a large organization that includes, I don't know, dozens of members um, or maybe everyone within a specific major, um, it's better to go through the Department of IT and have them help you uh, with that process. So um, scroll. Here we go. Um, so if you want to um, bulk enroll, you can do that using um, a spreadsheet. So you can create an Excel spreadsheet and then just have all of the A or Z IDs um, down one column. Um, and then you can go back to that it.niu.edu site. Um, and then you can submit a generic re request. And so you would do that. Uh, so we're back on this site here. We'll click Request Services. And then over on the right-hand column uh, near the bottom, it says Submit Generic Request. You'll click that. Uh, you can type in the contact information. You can attach uh, your uh, Excel spreadsheet. And then you can write a description in there. Uh, and submit it, and then uh, do it. We'll be able to uh, bulk upload all of those members um, for you. Uh, and the, the, you would follow the same process if you want to. Uh, if your organization is, um, like I said, like a if it includes like a, an entire major or a minor or uh, anything like that, you would just put that information in the description here and send that to do it. If they have questions, they'll follow up with you, and if not, they'll be able to make that. Um, that link between uh, the MyNIU system and Blackboard, and it will be able to import all, all of those members into the course for you, so you will not have to manually uh, upload all those, which would be quite tedious. Um, so that's those are the, the main ways that, that you would add users. Uh, so manually add them. You can upload a spreadsheet to do it or you can provide them with more specific information if it's uh, from a specific group on campus um, and they can help you with that upload process. Uh, the next thing is actually using Ultra and how to build an Ultra. Um, so it's going to look different than original. Uh, essentially what you get is you land on the course content page. Um, this one is already showing that there's some uh, pieces that are built out, uh, but what you're gonna find are these like gray lines uh, and these plus signs. And sometimes they're kind of hidden and you have to hover over them uh, and then you'll find them and you can click the plus. Let me uh, bring my page over so I can demonstrate that. There we go. Um, so for example, here, uh, this is what it will look like when you first get to a page. Uh, and the very first time you add something, you'll click this add content page. And if you wanna create something new, you'll click create. If you have content somewhere else, uh, like in another Blackboard course or organization, you can click copy content. Uh, you can upload from your computer or the cloud, uh, or you can access the um, tools that are in the content market as well. Um, but typically we'll be creating, so I'm gonna click the create sign here. And then you get these options. So in original, there was a whole list that included um, all types of items. Uh, those items are more, more condensed in, um, in Ultra. 
Uh, so for example, if you're giving assessments, it only shows you tests, assignments, and forms. If this is a, a an organization that you would actually grade something and you wanted to have things like quizzes, for example, or homework, you can recategorize them once you create them. These tools are pretty much identical. Um, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna start with adding a folder and then we'll come back to that. Um, so there, there are essentially two ways to organize your information, like two bucket systems. One are learning modules. Uh, and one is a folder. So if you um, if you if you want to like have a sequence, like you want your users to look at this item and then next this item and then this item after that, um, a learning module might be a better tool uh, because you can force sequencing. So you can make it that they have to do one thing before they do the next and before they do the next and so on. You can also add an image to a learning module. So when you create one, um, you can you can put an image in here. Uh, you can add the description here. You can put an image in here, um, just for example. Uh, like this. And then you could click for sequencing if you want it to, to open, uh, to, that students have to actually, or, or users have to work through it in a sequence. I'm turning that off for now. And then you just hit save. And then the learning module appears like this. Um, there are, and then if you want to make it visible, you're going to just, you'll see that uh, typically they'll sh have this eyeball with the, the cross through it or the dash through it. Uh, you can click the drop down and make it visible there. Um, and then if you want to add something inside of it, you'll see that there's a plus sign that appears here, um, kind of within the box. If you want to add something before, you see there's a plus sign here. And then here you see a line that if you hover over it, it turns purple and you can add a plus sign and you can add other content here. It's okay if you put something in a spot where you don't want it because you can drag and drop uh, here very easy. So um, I'm gonna add, within this, I'm gonna add a folder. So I'll click create. I'm gonna click a folder. I'm gonna name it folder one. I'll make it visible by clicking this little drop down here, making it visible. And then I'll hit save. And this is where we get to a major difference between um, original and ultra. Uh, you can only nest two layers deep um, in ultra. So in original, you could have a folder. And then inside of that folder, you could have a bunch of folders. And then if you opened one of those folders, you could have more folders inside of it. And that could keep going uh, pretty much indefinitely. Um, in ultra, uh, the idea is that it's supposed to be more user friendly. Uh, and as a result, they limit how deep uh, you can nest items. So you can have a folder or a learning module as the top layer. And then within that, you can have uh, you know any number of folders that you want, but those folders cannot have other folders inside of them. So you can only go two layers deep. So for example, if I wanted to put another folder in here and I open this folder and I click plus and I click create, that option no longer exists. So I can only put files um, or documents or assignments and so on in here uh, because this module was level one and the folder was level two you can't add a third level uh, deep but like i said you could you can't add content in here you just can't add more folders inside of there so if you have a course that has a whole bunch of nested folders uh, inside of folders uh, copying content over uh, it will flatten that out for you um, so it's going to take your folders out of other folders and just kind of bump them up to the same level which is going to require um, some cleanup on your part if you have, like I said, if you have a bunch of folders that are nested. Um, as a result, we typically recommend doing more granular copying uh, Copying in that case, um, as opposed to just copying everything in bulk from your old organization to your new organization. Um, so that's how you add those. Uh, I saw a, a message, let me... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Finding sometimes finding these plus signs and how to add things can be quite challenging. Um, if you if you can't find them where you want them, if you just um, just click here, I'm going to just create another folder. I'd have one. Um, you can next to the the item, if you hover over it, it'll it'll highlight gray. There are these uh, six dots. You can click and grab, uh, and then you can kind of drag and drop it where you want, and it'll highlight purple um, in the place where it's going to drop. Um, so let's say I want to put that folder there, and then I want to take this folder, and I want to actually drop it below. Um, you can move things around that easy. So um, yeah, you kind of have to be on the lookout for these things. They can be a little bit sneaky in where, they, in where they're placed. 
Um, once you have content on your page, um, you can edit that content um, by clicking on the three dots out to the right. Uh, you can click edit here, and then it'll take you back into um, that same screen you saw when you created the item. There's some other useful tools. Um, one is called progress tracking. Um, by default, it's turned off. Um, if you click turn on and then you click this slider, um, this provides, uh, I think, kind of two useful features for users um, once they are, uh, let me just show you. Uh, once a user is in the course, they'll get these little circles. Um, and once they've accessed something, they can check off items. Like, oh, I've looked at this, and they can check that off. Oh, I've completed this, I can check that off, and so on. Um, for me, they, I love that feature as a, when I'm in, taking courses, um, just for my own brain. Uh, but then for you, as the uh, either the instructor or the overseer of the organization, discard that, um, you'll be able to click here and click uh, participant, participant progress, and you'll see who has actually opened the items. Uh, because I didn't save that, it didn't show uh, the item opened here. But had I saved that, it would show that I had just opened this item on 418, and it would give me the time that it was first opened. So that can be useful to see who's actually accessed information in the course. And uh, in order to do that, you have to have progress tracking turned on. Um, let me see. Yeah, it, you're you're correct, Wes. Uh, from time to time, it will have that information isn't always perfectly accurate. So if you're using it, for example, in a course, and you're wanting to use it to like hold students uh, accountable, um, it can be a little buggy uh, and not always perfectly accurate. And that sometimes is dependent on if they're using a computer or if they're using their phone uh, or a mobile device. And and then within a mobile device, are they using a um, browser or are they using the app and so on. So it can get a little bit quirky. Um, okay, so that, that was adding, oh, uh, some of the features that um, exist here. So I'm just gonna add this, uh, I'm gonna click that plus sign again uh, and I'm gonna click create. You can, uh, you can add Word docs, PDF docs, um, uh, you can link to to your Google Drive, um, all of that by by clicking the plus and then just um, uploading a, an item or adding it through cloud storage. Um, but I'm going to click here. You can also use the um, Ultra Document feature, which lets you build out um, a document here. So uh, it has this text editor tool. You can add images. You can add links. You can add videos, uh, text, and so on in here. Um, Blackboard's actually working on improving this right now. We're piloting. Um, uh, the new version of this, which is going to allow you to kind of build in different columns um, and actually import uh, other types of documents into um, into the, these ultra documents. Uh, they're still working on making sure that it functions well and, and does what everyone wants, but I would say by the summer that will be uh, likely be available. Um, but you can add all of that in here. Um, in, in addition to that, you could, um, I'm going to just pick test here. Um, if you're using any sort of assessments, here's the, the categories. You can really add as many categories as you want. I'm not really going to go over the gradebook feature today unless uh, some of you are actually using that and want me to spend time on that. Um, but if you click on this category here, I can click test, um, and it gives you these eight presets, but you can create your own as well. Uh, you have as many as you want, um, and you can relabel things. So even though it only says test and assignment, you can really create anything that you want to create. They just keep it, uh, they just limit it to those two because it's kind of like the the best two templates to start with. Um, but that's on there. And then any of the settings uh, that need to be updated, you can do with these uh, setting wheels, the cogs. So if you click those, you can uh, change the due dates. Uh, if you want to collect things offline, if you want to prohibit late submissions uh, and so on. Um, so that, that's a great question. Uh, would tests work as a, a poll format? Um, it could. It could. Um, an another way that you could, another feature that they've added is um, is the 
forms. Uh, and so if you're trying to collect something that's not going to be graded, uh, but you just want like a, essentially like a survey or a poll result, you can use forms. Uh, and I'll show you that in just a second. Um, but here are all of these, all of the settings that you can add or change. You can mark things formative. Uh, like I said, you could change the category, the attempts, the points. Um, if you want to grade it using points or letters or percentages. Um, and, and so on. If you use lockdown browser, you can add that. You can add time limits. Uh, save assign, you can assign to groups. All of those features are in uh, in the settings here. Uh, go ahead, Corinne, did you have a question? Yeah, it was when you get to the forms that, uh, uh, that is interesting to me is, yep. I, particularly part of this, uh, I have a um, one in um, original to transition over, but like I was thinking, when you mentioned the progress monitoring more for the students, they want to know, okay, have I accomplished this, this, and this? And so <laughs> that way to help you kind of yes, no for us, but also it helps indicate for them. So that was where I was. Going. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm, I'm currently taking a course here and I, I use that, those checks on the, on the progress. Uh, I don't, it helps me stay sane. I feel like, like I feel accomplished and I feel like I know exactly where I am every time I log back in. Um, so that's, that's, that's a great, that's a great tool. Um, here, I'm going to click the, the plus again, and I'm going to click create, uh, and the forms, this is, this was newly added. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was in March. Okay. Um, and, it, and it's here okay. under assessments, with test okay. assignment and forms. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it has fewer options, um, of the types of questions. Um, than some of the other assessments, but it has a Likert question that the other ones don't have access to. Um, so you could add essay questions, Likert questions, multiple choice, or true false. You can't do um, like like the one you can add a, like a picture, and then you can find like a hot spot in the picture or fill in the blank and stuff. Um, but for the forms, you just get these, um, and then the settings over here um, al allow you to kind of make. Uh, some changes here. The forms aren't graded. Um, right. I don't believe I don't believe the option to grade exists within forms. So um, I'm looking just to make sure. Oh, actually, you can. You can <laughs> if you want to mark it graded. Uh, you can. But if any, if you don't do that initially, and someone fills it out, you can't go back and make changes to then update it to grade. I think. So um, important to note if you want to use it for that. Um, but ideally, you'll get information from like a poll or, or a, a survey or something using the form feature. Close that. Um, a couple of other features are uh, can be found here in this um, set of three dots out to the right. Um, I'm going to click here. And the main thing that there is you can import stuff here uh, and you can also copy from here. You can look at unused items. This is really useful, um, especially if you're getting close to your uh, storage quota. Um, but you can open this up. You can see how big each of your files are, uh, how much space you're using. And then you can see, do I have a whole bunch of things in here that aren't being used uh, that maybe I want to remove and take out? But I'm going to click batch edit. Um, once you copy things in, this is a good way to kind of um, a good place that you can kind of go into without having to open every single assignment uh, and make some changes to dates um, or if you if you use like release conditions you can update those here too uh, and so you can highlight items and make uh, large scale changes down here at the bottom or if you even just want to use this feature to edit um, individual items you can click on the little calendar out here to the side and then you can put your show on date and hide after date and you can do this for all of your items you don't have to go into uh, and open each one and go into the settings this way. So this is um, this is this part here was newly added, I think just either this month or last month, um, and so it's it's it can be a, a big time saver I think for a lot of people. So that's how you add things, um, and or I'm sorry, how you create things. Um, the next thing that many of you probably want to do is import from your old course, and this works differently than it did in original. So if you use the original, um, a lot of times you would push out. Uh, so you, uh, you, had, you would go into your course and then you would push out the things that you wanted to send somewhere else. Um, in Ultra, everything is pulled in. 
So you start in your ultra course and then you go find that information in your other courses and you pull it in. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm again, here we're on the main content page. And if you go over to uh, that same three dots that we were just on in the upper right hand corner, and then you can click um, copy items. And then you'll get a, a view like this. And so here I'm on this organizations tab, and these are the other organizations that I'm a member of. You can also pull from courses by just selecting the course tab. You can bring everything in at one time. Uh, this is, we do not advise doing this. This can cause, depending on your, on what you currently have, uh, this can lead you to having a lot of kind of cleanup work uh, and can get kind of confusing, especially if you have like a lot of assessments. Um, it can get a little bit messy, but if you wanted to do that, um, you would just select the checkbox next to it and then click start copy and it will pull everything in the way that it's in. Like I said, if you have things that are nested more than two layers deep, it will flatten those out for you, um, which may not be what you want. Uh, so if that's the case, you might want to do the cleanup in your course first and then make your in your old course or your old organization and then pull it into your new organization after you kind of have it organized uh, in a way that will fit Ultra. Um, what we recommend is more granular copying. Um, and you do that by clicking the little arrow out next to the course that you're working on. And then it will bring you to um, kind of the main areas of your course. I'm going to go into content here. And then here I have all of my items. And so you can now I can select, um, let's say I want to grab this discussion, uh, and this, uh, and I'm going to grab this document. And then I can click start copy. And then you'll see this little spinning wheel. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we'll wait a minute or so. If it's just a few items like this, it's probably actually already in. And we can refresh the browser up here uh, and see if it came in. Yeah, and they're already here. Uh, and because sometimes this thing will just keep spinning. So if you if you're importing a lot of information, it might take a while. But if it's just a couple of things, after, if it's still spinning after a minute or so, just refresh the browser and it will be there. So you can see these three items came in hidden. So let's say I pulled these in, uh, but I don't want them here. I want to put them inside of this folder. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just click uh, the little, uh, I'm left clicking, uh, these little dots out to the side of that item. And I'm just going to drag and drop them right into that folder. And I'll do that for all three of these. Um, and then I want to make them all visible. I could go into each item, um, click edit, and then change uh, visibility here. But I'm gonna use the batch edit just to demonstrate that again. So I'll click the three dots up here to the right. I'm gonna click batch edit. I'm going to um, click on my folder and then I can edit visibility and I can make uh, everything visible within that folder at one time like this, save visibility. Uh, and now all of those items are now visible. Or I could have uh, did the drop down and then clicked on the little uh, calendar next to each one and um, made them visible or invisible. Actually, no, I can't. I couldn't do it that way. So, um, okay, what do I mean by two layers deep? That means you, the first layer can be either a, uh, let's just say it's a folder. Then within that folder, you can have another folder. You, can, you have as many folders as you want. So that's the top folder. Let's say it's called, let me just show it. That's the easiest probably. Um, so here I have the learning module. That's layer one. The learning module in a folder would be layer one. I open that, I have inside of that, this folder here, that's layer two. So that's two layers deep. Inside of this, I can add content, but I can't add more folders. I could, I could take this folder here and stick it, um, well, it's blocking me, but it shouldn't be. Uh, let's see. And I can put it here, right? So the main layer, uh, layer one is the module, and these folders here are in layer two but neither of these folders can have more folders inside of them. That's what it means by two layers deep. So they can't be nested any more than that. You can put content in here, but no more folders. Okay, great. Um, that's how you copy in. I'll show that again. Uh, click the three dots up to the upper right. Um, click copy items. You can also just click the plus sign anywhere uh, and click copy content another way to get there and it takes you to the same page uh so i'm going to pull from a course i'm going to go to this one because it's 
uh, the one I typically work in. I'm going to click the arrow out to the side. And that takes me to all my information. I can pull in rubrics. I can pull in the grade schema, any announcements that I want to, discussion posts and all those things as well. But I'm just going to grab from the content here. And I'm going to grab this test as well. Hit start copy. Refresh it just so it goes. And there's my test. So that's how you copy things in. Um, like I said, you can bulk copy everything in, especially if you don't have a whole lot of information and it's not deeply nested. Uh, you can do that. And then once it copies in, you can just come in and make your edits and changes um, in your new organization. Uh, let me go back to my slides so I don't forget anything. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, we, we typically recommend that granular copy just because it's a lot easier, especially if you have a very complex organization, it's a lot easier to keep things organized the way that you want. Um, and that, that way, if there are errors or things don't come across, it's a lot easier to notice that also in that moment and not kind of later uh, that you find out that something didn't come in, that something didn't come in when you needed it. Um, so we did this already as well. So yeah, so like I said, you can copy things in all at once by you just click instead of into that arrow, you just select the course and copy it all in. But again, typically that's going to require a little extra work. Uh, and then the last thing is student preview. So uh, it's always useful to uh, preview everything um, ahead of time. Uh, and then that way you know what your users um, or your students are seeing. Uh, and you can use this option here, which is uh, participant preview. If it's a class, it'll say student preview, I think. Um, and you click start preview. And this is what it will look like um, for the users. So they'll click here. Uh, and then they can access these documents here. The other folder that I can see in my course is not available. It was marked invisible, so I can't see that. Uh, and that test that I pulled in was invisible, so I can't see that either. Um, but that's what that's what they see. And now you know. Uh, and also, if there were gradebook items, you can get a preview of what the gradebook looks like. Um, this is sometimes useful if you've copied in a bunch of, of gradebook items and it didn't update the due dates. Um, like, for example, this came in on uh, for April 4th. It copied over the, an old due date. Uh, and so it and I had automatic zero set, so it automatically issued a zero. If you have a class uh, and you do this, you'll get a lot of emails typically from students <laughs> wondering what happened to their grade. So using the preview uh, is, a, is a good option to kind of make sure everything looks the way you want it to look. Um, I hit exit. I'm going to discard here. Um, and that's how you use um, student preview. Any questions on any of this? I've gone a little bit fast, so I'm happy to slow down and, and uh, answer anything that's come up or, or any concerns that you might have. I can make yeah I can make these slides available. Um, I've also put that link in that kind of follows uh, everything. Um, let's see if I still have it. Um, it goes through most of the things that we've covered here today as well. Um, and I'll also share this video. I'll send a follow up email to all the um, all the attendees that I'll I'll include the video for this as well. Okay, let me check my slides again, just to make sure I didn't leave anything off. Um, here's all of a, all of the information for um, our center. Um, the the website niu.edu slash CIDL has a, a tremendous number of resources on there related to Blackboard, um, where you can probably access anything that you need. Um, you can also email us. You can email me directly, kevin.harris at niu.edu or uh, CIDL at niu.edu and someone will reach out to you. Um, and we can really support you in any way that you need. We can set up times to meet. Uh, we can answer questions on email. 
I can make little video tutorials of any, any things that you need um, help or support with. Um, uh, you, we're, we have people in the office every day as well. Uh, we don't get a lot of in-person visitors, but we are here. Uh, if you want to stop in, uh, we can work with you on your organization um, and anything else that you need. Uh, if you don't have other questions, uh, thanks for attending. Um, and we're happy to help with anything uh, that comes up or anything that you need support with. Just let us know. And I, I will stay on here uh, if you have specific um, questions or, or need uh, specific support with anything. Thank you very much.